Family Fun and Fellowship, which is different from Free Food and Fellowship, <laughs> um, is going to be at 6.30. Um, it's usually at the Johnsons, but we're going to have it at our house this week. If you want to come and you don't know where we live, just let us know and we'll give you directions. Um, we're going to be do, we're going to be eating and doing a Bible study, and then we're going to have some games afterwards. So um, we encourage especially teenagers to come because we want to kind of have something for our young people to do to keep them Amen. occupied. <laughs> um, Wednesdays are Bible study at seven o'clock. Um, of course, service on Thursdays at seven, and then Sunday we have service at one o'clock. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Mm -hmm. Okay. Wasn't that just quick? <laughs> Straight to the point? No ad lib and no <laughs> fair. Praise the Lord. We're going to take up some prayer requests right now. Why don't we stand again? Like the Catholic Church, up and down, up and down, up and down. What? Well, never mind. Uh, we need to do some praying. There's some real needs in this community right now. And uh, <clears throat> we're going to address those right now. I'm glad that people are starting to actually bring up the pink slips so that we can have prayer go pretty smoothly. We need to pray for <clears throat> the rest of the Garcia family, that the Lord uh, takes care of them and shows them his love. We need to pray for our, uh, Antoinette Watchman, June Long, Della Begay, and John Leo. Uh, we need to pray for John Leo's sister. Is that Long? Is that her name? Okay. Uh, I believe the Lord can heal her of her ailment, and she needs blessings from the Lord. Uh, we need to pray for uh, the Fox family, for the entire family. I'm just so grateful they're coming to church. They got a whole road to themselves today. Yeah. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. We need to pray for Todd. He's having some problems with his stomach and, you know, he's got some internal uh, things that need to be healed by the Lord. Uh, and we need to pray. You know, I've got a letter from uh, Nikki and she's thanking us for, you know, our ministry and, you know, our patience with them because we are patient with people and that they're going to be here Sunday. So she's communicating with me and letting me know what we need to pray for. We need to pray for not only Todd <clears throat> and Nikki. But we also need to pray for Roy Millsap. There's a possibility he won't make it through the night. And so we need to pray for him. He's part of, the, you know, his destiny is grandpa. And uh, I believe the Lord can either heal him or bless him tonight. I, I want to go baptize him tonight. I'm, when we're done, I'm, me and Destiny are going to talk about going over there. Uh, I believe in the Lord can do wonderful things. Uh, and if the Lord does take him, I'd like for him to go with the Lord. Can I get amen? Amen. Praise God. <clears throat> He's already had experience with the church in the past, and so I'm very willing to go do that. Uh, we also need to pray for uh, this community. There's a lot of crazy things going on. This world is getting sicker and sicker every day. Uh, we need to pray for a genie that's uh, Saul's mother-in-law. She broke her foot. And uh, I've been going by and praying for that foot. It hasn't healed yet. Has that, he has that foot been healed completely yet? I told her to take off the cast. Last time I was there, I felt the Holy Ghost. I was laying off. I said, take it off. <laughs> she said, no, I'll keep it on. I said, that's all right. Mm -hmm. uh, but she also told me when she's done uh, with that foot problem that she will be back in church. So I'm excited to hear that. Praise God. <laughs> we would pray. She asked me to pray for her grandson. And, and that means that she has faith that God can do something. Uh, praise the Lord. So why don't we go ahead. We also need to pray for Sister Carol's sons. That the Lord bless them. Put a hedge of protection around them. Give her some peace. Because <laughs> she needs some peace today. So let's go ahead and put those prayers before the Lord. Why don't we raise our hands and call on God right now. Jesus, we trust in you. We believe in you. We give you all the glory today. I also want to pray for Meme and Pepe, which is uh, my daughter's grandparents. Uh, I want to pray for all your families that they find their way to the Lord. All the people that we've mentioned. There is a whole slew of people out there on their way here. Uh, we're, the church is growing. We're going through a growth spurt right now. We're going to be having some baptisms. We're going to have people get the Holy Ghost. God's moving. 
in a powerful way. And we just ask that he continue to touch and bless those that we've mentioned. Bless all those unspoken requests that are in this room. People who have a need in this place are in the right place. Because God can answer that need. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. We bless you. We praise you. We lift up your name in faith. That you would hear these prayers in Jesus' name. And the church said amen. amen. How about they said amen again? Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. We're going to take up an offering. Oh, it got quiet now. <laughs> Come on, praise the Lord for that too. Praise God. <laughs> Bible says to be a cheerful giver. How, how, how many people believe that the actual story of the loaves, the two loaves, and the, what was it, four five, fish, five, five fish? Five loaves. Five loaves and the two fishes. Who believes that really happened? Amen. Took a boy's lunch and fed f over 5,000, probably 30,000 people were fed with a little boy's lunch. Amen. So I believe whatever you give, some may give a little, some may give a lot, but I believe the Lord will bless whatever you give. It's been increasing. It's been, it's been taken care of. The Lord has blessed this church with the ability to function without stressing every month about paying the bills. But it's only because we have been cheerful givers. I want us to continue that mentality right now. I want to give you an opportunity to be blessed by giving on to the Lord. In Jesus' name, we have an offering march. If you guys will go this way. I don't know why everybody decided to sit over there today, but that's all right. You guys go this way and come around. <laughs> Praise the Lord. children's church may be dismissed all you kids behave yourselves or tell on your parents
I got a belt with meat hooks on it. And when it hits you, the flesh comes off. I'm just kidding. That's from Bill Cosby. I didn't, I didn't mean that. I, I used to listen to a lot of comedy, and a, but a lot of comedy has those big F-bombs in it and stuff. And so I started listening to Bill, because Bill doesn't drop F-nothing. He's just flaring, flaring, filth, flaring, flaring, filth. That's it. Praise God. If you'll open up your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17. Just hold that place. I'm going to just, we're going to continue on with this message of holiness. I am just been charged with, with research and with study on this subject. I am just so excited. I think I'll be able to end it by, th by Sunday, uh, but no guarantees. I'm just going to continue to preach my heart, preach the word, and get this church in a mindset that's in congruence with the scripture, that's equal with the scripture, so that we can find ourselves pleasing the Lord. Does anybody here want to please the Lord? I want to please the Lord. Praise God. In 2 Corinthians, don't go there. Just stay at Ephesians 4. I'm just going to do a quick recap just to get us in the right mindset. I was showing you in the scripture how the Bible is specifically telling us that holiness is separation from sin, from uncleanliness, from the unclean thing, from all filthiness of the flesh and the spirit, and to be filled with comfort and joy through your tribulation. It says that when you are in a position of having a godly sorrow or a holy sorrow, that it brings repentance unto salvation. Holiness in that respect is absolutely a part of your salvation. Because if you don't separate from sin, you can't enter to God. Filthiness, uncleanliness, and trash will separate you from God. And so I want you all to be cleaved to God. So... <clears throat> Now we get to Ephesians. I couldn't go there. I know I started with a book. Uh, I guess I should read part of it. No, I'll read it before we go on. Uh, but we're going to read right now as a continuation of, without question, 100% clarity, the description of what holiness is in the Word of God. Not according to man, not according to anything else. People's traditions, people's whims, what they think, opinions. That's not what I'm interested in. I'm interested in the word of God. Are you ready? Let's go. Ephesians 4.17 reads, This I say therefore and testify in the Lord that you henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. Verse 18 having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that's in them because of the blindness of their hearts. Let's not be there, church. That's right. Let's not be there. We don't have to be there because of the word of God. Verse 19, who being past, who, who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to the work of all uncleanliness and greediness. That's what happens when we're in darkness. That's what happens when we rely on uh, ourselves instead of God. And that's what happens when we're blinded of the heart. Verse 20. This is what it means that you are if you're in this position. This is the answer. But ye have not so learned Christ. You have not so learned Christ. If so that ye have heard him. And have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. That you put off concerning the former conversation. The old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. Flesh. Dirt. Uncleanliness. And if you're, if you're living in those things after you've heard the word. Then you are not in Christ. You have not learned Christ. Amen. And we need to learn Christ in the house of God. We need to have the old man put off. That's what we've been hearing over and over again. The renewing of the minds. Old things become new. All these things are in the same direction and all these different scriptures. We're like on the fourth set of scriptures now. <clears throat> 23, and being renewed in the spirit of your mind. Some of you need to be brainwashed. Because your brains are dirty. And need to be cleaned. I'm not talking about a cult. I'm not talking about turning this church into a cult. I'm saying that we need to have our brains cleaned. So let's brain, wash your brain. And what's going to do it? The word of God. If you'll be obedient to it. 